man, that's I love man, I love the old hymns. That's uh kind of my wheelhouse. I'm not a new age guy, I'm not a, you know, fancy. I listen to old country music and hymns and they're just better. No offense, but hey, the old rugged cross and Benny did great. Benny's wife uh, always kind of makes fun of me because uh, I have a kind of a crush on Benny. <laughs> have you heard his voice though? It's not my fault. Uh, I'm not Pastor Johnny, if you can't tell. Um, my name is TJ, if you don't know me. I'm the youth pastor here at the White Church. And I get the honor of speaking with you guys tonight, today. I'm already messing up. Look at that. I'm going to start off with a joke. Kind of lighten the mood, icebreaker. Get everybody, you know, ready to go. Why do elephants paint their toenails red? So they can hide in strawberry fields. That's the joke. You ever seen an elephant in a strawberry field? I guess it works. That was the joke. Well, Pastor Johnny and Heather are still under the weather, um, but that's fine by me because I get to talk to you guys today. Um, that is no problem. Uh, I'm excited to do it, and they can be sick next week. Be fine. and wouldn't complain at all. I actually got a lot accomplished this week. Not at work, but around the house because they weren't here. But today uh, is week number one of the new series we're doing called Grind. It's also the final week of this series because I only get to preach once. But I'm going to talk about the grind. And I'm going to talk about working. And I'm going to talk about working to change who you are. Working to change yourself. And not just change, but to continue changing. Because that, that grind is that continual change, that getting closer and closer and closer to God, getting more and more and more like Jesus. That's the grind that I want to talk about. Because con to continue changing, you have to grind, and you have to just work and work. And there's a saying, you know, that says, respect the grind and then there's shirts they got shirts to say like rise and grind and you know the exercise guys do that which obviously i'm one of but you know <laughs> somebody laughed a little too hard that was a, an amanda laugh <laughs> but the grind is that that work that you put in to something the grind is the uh, the process that you go through and you keep working, you keep working, and you keep working. The, pri the grind is what makes you from where you're at right now to where you want to be. It what helps you succeed is the grind. You hear about these like successful people, like the big you know millionaires, billionaires, uh, those type of people. And I love the, the rags to riches stories. Uh, like, you know, they started at nothing. And, you know, Steve Jobs started his company in a garage. And so did, you know, hundreds and hundreds of others. But they grind. They keep working. They keep working because they want to succeed and they want to do well. Uh, Mark Cuban, billionaire. He owns the Dallas Mavericks. He, one day he was 12 years old and he said, went to his dad and said, hey, I want new basketball shoes. His dad looked at his shoes and said, those shoes are fine. They still work. So if you want new shoes, you're going to have to get a job. You're going to buy them. So Mark Cuban went to a store, bought trash bags, and then went door to door selling trash bags for double what he bought them for because they paid for the convenience of 
trash bag delivery. But pay and just kept grinding, kept going, kept going until, he, you know, he got his shoes. But the shoes didn't, you know, didn't stop with the shoes. He kept working and kept working and kept working. And, you know, now he's owner of a NBA team, billionaire, bit with a B, billion, which is just crazy. All because of his grind, his work ethic. One of his, you know, famous quotes is, uh, sweat equity is the most valuable equity. Sweat equity is the most valuable equity. The time you put into something is more valuable a lot of times than the money you put into something. These people like Steve Jobs, I talked about Steve Jobs, they don't settle for adequate. They don't settle for, okay, we did average. Uh, Steve Jobs was never satisfied. If you read about Steve Jobs, when they first came out with the iPod, big giant brick iPod, he said, it's too big. Make it smaller. They said, we can't make it smaller. He said, make it smaller. Said, we can't do it. Like, it's, this is as small as it can get. And this was like, I don't know, 2000. So it was like, like this podium. It was, an iPod, it was an iPod like this size. We thought we were the coolest kids around. We'd hook them on our belt. Man, those were the good old days. I had an iPod mini, and it was black and white, and it was still as big as my phone, the iPod mini. But he said, it's too big. Make it smaller. He said, there's nothing we can do. So he took the iPod, brand new iPod, and he took it to a fish tank, and he dropped it in the fish tank. And bubbles started coming up because he dropped it in the fish tank. You see this, he said, you see those bubbles? That means there's air in there. Make it smaller. Work harder. And that's what he did to succeed, and that's what he did to push and push and push, and he wouldn't stop. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about succeeding financially. Y'all are on your own with that. I'm a youth pastor. I'm not succeeding financially. But, no offense, Pastor Johnny, if you're watching this, working harder to be more like Jesus. The work we put in to be more like Jesus. The work we put in to be closer to Jesus. The work we put in to be, to grow the kingdom of God. That's what I want to talk about. That's the success that I want to talk about. And why it's so, so important. And our hang-ups that we run into when we try. We have to be growing our faith. We have to be growing our faith because if we're not, we become stagnant. And we face an enemy who will stop at nothing to ruin us. To ruin our marriages, to ruin our relationships, to ruin anything, to ruin our family. That's the enemy we face, and if we're not continually growing, continually striving for better, then we're going to fail. We have to build our relationship with God, and a relationship with God is just like any other relationship. If you don't spend time in that relationship, it's not going to grow. It won't grow. It's not a, you know, quick fix relationship. Uh, if you don't spend time with your kids, your kids aren't going to like you. I'm not saying God's not going to like you if you don't spend time with him. But your relationship isn't going to be there. You're not going to recognize his voice. You're not going to recognize the things he's doing for you. Uh, the miracles, the everyday miracles that we see. Because you don't have that relationship with him. He's a stranger who died for your sins. 
So even after salvation, we have to be continually building uh, this relationship. Um, who likes infomercials? I love infomercials. I used to stay up and watch them. I'm a night owl. So, you know, I'd be at my friend's house or something. We'd be watching infomercials. And the greatest infomercial with the, the number one line in the history of marketing, this guy made a rotisserie chicken oven. It just sat on your counter. And he said, you just said it and forget it. Remember that? You just said it and forget it. And overnight, trillions of chickens were bought. And I don't know. I didn't do research on that part. Said it and forget it. And we sometimes, as believers, as Christians, as people in relationships, we think it's a set it and forget it. I raised my hand. I got baptized. That's the extent of my relationship. I'm going to continue, you know, on my course, and I have that parachute uh, for when I need it. We do that with our relationships. We do that with our relationship with God, which is it's terrible. And I'm not saying that salvation is based on works at all. And we might not even do it on purpose, but it happens. Uh, there's a pastor who said, the only thing that I contributed to my salvation was sin that made it necessary. I'm not saying that, you know, we have to work to get into heaven, which is n not the case. But after that first initial step in faith, that's when the work should begin. That's when you should start working to advance the kingdom of God. That's when you should start working to grow your relationship with him. I have kids, like lots of kids, just everywhere. And, you know, when they're born, you know, you begin that relationship, and they're like, hey, how you doing? Shake their hand, and that's it, right? It'd be a pretty crummy relationship. No, that's when the, you begin the relationship, and you continue the relationship. That's when you start to become more Christ-like. You start to strengthen, strengthen that relationship. We're going to go to Second Peter. Um, Second Peter is a, a letter written by Peter to a, an unknown party, and uh, they call it one of the general epistles because for a long time they just assumed it was a, a letter that you pass around because it's applicable to lots of people in different situations and uh, it talks about false teachers and it talks about uh, the end times and uh, return of Christ and it talks about all these things but the heart of it Peter's saying continue the grind keep working everything is underscored with learn more grow in Christ be better than you were keep working put in the sweat equity and second Peter 1 3 through 10 it's a long one guys I'm not a good reader that's what my first through seventh grade teachers said but what do they know Second Peter 1, 3 through 10 says, 1, 3 through 9. His divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. By these he has given us very great and precious promises so that through them you may share in the divine nature, escaping the corruption that is in the world because of the evil's desire. For this very reason, 
Make every effort to supplement your faith with goodness. Goodness with knowledge. Knowledge with self-control. Self-control with endurance. Endurance with godliness. Godliness with brotherly affection. Brotherly affection with love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being useless or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The person who lacks these things is blind and short-sighted and has forgotten the cleansing from his past sins. It's a mouthful. But he's saying you have to supplement your faith with goodness. You have to supplement your faith with knowledge. Faith is, faith is an amazing thing, but you have to supplement it so that you are fruitful. So that your relationship doesn't become stagnant. Peter understood evil. He understood corruption. He understood uh, the sin in the world and the great threat of that sin. He said, you have to work. You have to work. You have to continue changing. You have to be better. When it comes to the false teachers, you have to work hard so they don't steer you wrong. When it comes to the end time, you, you have to work so it, it, none of it's going to matter in the end. He says everything's going to be ash. So continue working on what really matters, your relationship with God. And we have all this information, like what we should do and how, you know, we got to supplement our faith with all these things. And <coughs> Excuse me. We have to grow. We have to fight. We have to grind. We know this. We know how relationships work. So why do we fail so many times? We'll talk about... A a couple, three reasons we fail in growing these relationships, fail in the continued effort to change, to continue changing. Uh, our youth group just got back from camp, and it was amazing. It was so much fun. Uh, I only punched three kids they had it coming so i'm not gonna say who because their parents are in the crowd we had a blast we had wonderful experiences uh i think we had about 45 decisions made uh it was amazing that's uh, uh, we had kids who would not wait to get baptized we had one kid who got baptized that night we had to maybe do some things against the rules Hop a fence. Because I'm, I'm not waiting until tomorrow. I'm getting baptized. Right now. And we were so excited. And we we're on this, you know, spiritual high. And we're doing so great. And this is awesome. And I had to tell him, this is awesome. This is the amazing. And you shouldn't take it for granted. But you're going to have to go home. And when you go home, not everybody changes. Not everybody is doing the grind. Not everybody is working for the same things you're working for. In fact, a lot of people in our society, the culture we live in today, are completely opposed to what we're working for. They're on the spiritual high, and I said, you're going to go home. And these people, they weren't at camp. And a lot of times we have this mentality that, hey, I changed, and I'm working for something better now. So maybe just in the back of our mind, we're thinking they should be doing the same thing. They should be changed like I am. And if you don't, 
If you just go back to the same old routines and the same old things, then you'll fail. And you'll fail. You see this with addicts. And they'll come and they'll get clean and they'll be doing great, fantastic, and they'll get sober and everybody's happy for them. <clears throat> And they're, you know, grinding away. It's a new me. I'm going to do this. And they have the best intentions in mind. But if they go back to wherever they were and uh, things haven't changed, if those things haven't changed, they're more susceptible to failure. Way more susceptible to failure. They have the best intentions and they're going to kill it. They're, this is it. This is the one. And they fail because the people around them haven't changed. You don't know how many diets I've been on that I've failed because of the people around me. <laughs> Quit laughing when I say that stuff. I'll start eating better and I'm like, I'll come into work. I'm like, I haven't had a carbohydrate since 7 this morning. <sighs> and then Cody will come in. And be like, hey, buddy, I got you a, a chicken McGriddle, which is like my favorite thing from McDonald's. They have the pancake biscuit, like the bread is pancakes with built-in syrup and a chicken. Ch What's not it's sweet and savory? Yeah, I could go for one right now. <laughs> but you'll give me a chicken McGriddle and like muscle memory takes over. And before I know it, I've got half a chicken McGriddle eaten. I black out and I wake up with syrup on my shirt. It's not my fault. Or I drive home and I see Taco Bell and they got dollar burritos. And Taco Bell hasn't changed. Even though I've changed, the Taco Bell workers are just waiting for me to come back. They haven't changed, but we expect them to. The people around us haven't changed, so we expect them to, and we get held back a lot of times. We get held back by the people who haven't changed or don't care to change. The second obstacle we run into is the, my favorite. This is just how I am. This is just me. This is, that's just me. That's how I do. Uh, Lindsay and I, we used to fight. Not anymore. We used to. But nobody laughed at that. They believe me? No. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what. She fights. I just sit there and take it. And I say, yes, dear. But Lindsay and I used to fight, and I'd say, hey, listen. This is just the way God made me. Deal with it. I'm not changing. Which is just a blatant lie. Uh, God did not make me uh, a person who was uh, verbally abusive and drank too much. Now, that's not God's doing. I was definitely taking liberties with um, you know, God's creation in me. But that's just the way I am, the way it's always been. And we fail at the grind because changing things that about us that's always been this way is difficult. It's hard. I've always done it this way. And it's hard to step back and look and say, well, it's probably not the right way to do it. You see it at work, like places of business. You're like, why do we do it this way because we always done that way but why like because when I got trained that's how they did it so I'm training you like that that's the way it's always been done uh, when I was in the Marine Corps they they had this saying this you know this uh, little idiom I don't know the story and they talk about the five monkey experiment it's not an idiom. But they talk about the five monkey experiment and they say, hey, 
it's an actual study. It's, it is an actual study. And it talks about uh, the, you ready for this? To sound smart? Write this down. You can tell your friends later. <clears throat> Cultural acquisition of a specific learned response among rhesus monkeys. It's a real thing that they did. They did a study on monkeys and to see what would happen if they could develop learned responses. And this is the Marine Corps, we're not, like, we're not that smart. So they call it the five monkey experiment. So they put five monkeys in a cage and they put a ladder in the middle of the cage and they put a bunch of uh, bananas at the top of the ladder. And so monkeys, being monkeys, they see the bananas, they go to climb up the ladder and the scientists would spray down the monkeys with cold water. They take a fire hose and just spray down all the monkeys. So they, they'd stop and then another monkey would start to go up there. And he'd climb up there and as soon as he hit the first step, they'd start spraying down all the monkeys with cold water. Then they started pulling monkeys out and then replacing them with new ones who, who'd never been in the cage before. And the new guy who'd never been in the cage before, he sees a bunch of bananas, starts to climb up the stairs. What do the other monkeys do? They stop him. They attack that monkey. They go attack him and pull him down off the ladders. No, 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 no. You can't do that. They don't say that because they're monkeys. They pull the monkey down. And they continue doing this. They replace one at a time these monkeys. And by the end, like, there's monkeys who never experienced the cold water, never experienced uh, getting sprayed down with the hose, who would attack a monkey who tried to go up the ladder because that's the way it's always been done. And they learned that it's a, it's a, a learned response that they'd never been exposed to that, but they knew you're not supposed to go up that ladder. Why? Because that's the way it's always been done. We get programmed and we, we start doing these things in our lives and just keep working and keep working and keep working. That's why are you doing that way? It's, why are you living, living that way? Well, that's the way we've always done it. Why isn't church a priority it never has been why don't you sit and read your bible I never have and it's not always like these bad things why is you know why do you spend why do you take your kids to ball games on sunday mornings instead of coming to church it's just always been a priority doing things because that's the way they've always been done Falling into those same ruts. Affects your relationship with God. It affects the grind that you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be becoming more like Jesus. And I'm just, this is the way it's always been done. It's a sad excuse for not building a relationship with God. You can't define yourself by what you have always been. You can't define yourself by what you've always been. I used to have a pastor um, when we were in Texas, and he would get really worked up when somebody would be like, oh, I'm just, I'm just that way, or, oh, I just... His biggest thing, you ever heard the Gaither song, I'm just a sinner saved by grace? If somebody said, I'm just a sinner saved by grace, he'd be like, no, absolutely not. He'd tell him, hey, look, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. He said, no, you are not the same old thing that you were. Stop talking, speaking negativity into yourself. Stop living the same old way because I'm just a sinner. You're a saint who sins sometimes. You sin. 
Y'all do. I don't. But, sorry. That's not what defines you. You can't do something because that's the way it's always been done. What you were is irrelevant. Who you are in Christ is what's important. And what you are in Christ is a new creation. And just because you're a new creation doesn't mean it stops. That relationship doesn't just become stagnant. You're a new creation. When I was about 17, my dad got the first new and probably the last new car, like brand new car that he'd ever owned. I think it was too much stress for him. Because when he got that new car, it was like, nobody eating this car. If somebody eats in this car, you, you'd be, oh boy. Don't bring trash in the car. No. It's a new car. It's a new creation. And he was keeping it new. He was keeping it clean. He was taking steps to make sure it didn't wear out. But even a new car, if it's not properly taken care of, you're not doing maintenance on it. It's going to get some wear and tear. And, you know, he, he, like, he was a stickler. Man, if you, like, had a receipt or something he left in his car, he'd come in the house, kick the door open. Who defiled my car with this tiny piece of paper? Sorry. <laughs> that wasn't me. My bad. But then he'd, you know, kind of get lax and hey, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, and it didn't get like raggedy, but I mean, maybe somebody spilled something in the car. Not from my sister, not me. But it became to get old and it wasn't brand new anymore. As believers, we don't have to work to maintain uh, our salvation, but we do have to work against the things uh, of this world. We ha do have to work to make ourselves more like Jesus. The third obstacle is this. Change is hard. Change is hard. Just like looking and saying, hey, well, it's the way it's always been done. It's hard to get out of those ruts. It's hard. The grind is hard. That's so why it's called the grind and not the fluffy, not the pillow. It's hard. You got to go out and you got to grind. We work and work and work to guard ourselves against the corruption of the world and become more like Jesus, I live a life that honors him. We work to not just change, but to continue changing. And not only is the work hard, but the secular world is against us at every turn. We're doing it in an inhospitable environment. You know, in Canada, there's pastors being arrested for having church outside. They have church outside, and they're being arrested. There's been 45 churches. People have burnt 45 churches in Canada. Canada. Not like a Muslim country, not like a communist country somewhere over there, you don't, you know, you don't think about, you know, it's over there. Not one of those countries ruled by, you know, the government. A f free country. 45 churches burnt. The world we live in is not conducive to our way of life. You have to watch what your kids watch on TV. I'm about to just pull the TVs out of my house and you can watch VeggieTales or VeggieTales. <laughs> That's it. Sorry. VeggieTales or VeggieTales. But the work is hard. And, I mean, I'm not going to say it's not. But it's possible. It's feasible. It's doable. Who's seen Rocky? Obviously, everybody's seen Rocky. One of the greatest movies, and there's nobody, like, if you want to, you know, pump yourself up, 
for some hard work, watch Rocky. Rocky gets up, you know, he wants to be a fighter. He gets up at four o'clock in the morning and he goes, give me that cup. He goes and, you know, he makes himself the OG protein shake. You remember that? He just crack open the egg and, no? Yeah, he crack open the egg and. I need a flatter uh, pulpit for next service. microphone off he cracked the egg open and he, he, he did four he just drop in there his eyes are still shut from you know just waking up but he's got to go grind he's got to go work hard he's got to go make himself better and i'm not gonna drink this <laughs> like that she had her hand over her mouth like don't don't but she That's the OG protein shake. That's whey protein. That's what you need, just eggs. Oh yeah. That's the good stuff. But he's fighting because he's that's what he what does. He grinds and he wants to be the champion. He wants to do it. He wants to succeed. And he does. And at the end of the one, he, he succeeds. He, he's doing it. He's winning. And then Rocky two, Rocky three. By the time Rocky four comes around, we meet the Russian. The Russian, Ivan Drago. I must crush you. If he dies, he dies. The Russian. And what has happened to Rocky? He did a lot of hard work. He succeeded. He was a champ. And then the hard work kind of stagnated because he wasn't pushing himself anymore. So when this Russian guy kills his friend, punches him to death, what? He's got to avenge him and he's got to do the Rocky montage all over again, chasing chickens and like just getting into Russian butt kicking shape. Again, if Pastor Johnny's watching, I apologize for saying that. But he becomes complacent and he's out of shape and he's not working as hard anymore. So it takes extra when he decides, I'm going to get back in shape. Losing my manly physique is the worst thing that's ever happened to me because I can't get it back. Did y'all hear that? There's a person laughing backstage. <laughs> Golly. But we begin to slack off, and when we begin to slack off, that's when the enemy attacks. That's when the Russian attack. That's when the enemy attacks. When we become to slack off and we get fat and we get pudgy, that's when the enemy attacks. He's not going to attack us at our strongest. He's waiting for us when we're the weakest. We were at our weakest. The enemy comes into attack. First Peter 5, 8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He's going to devour you when you're weak, when your back's turned. He's not, Satan's not going to call your, your, secu- your secretary and set up uh, some spiritual battles. If we knew when it was going to happen, I mean, it'd be super easy. Right? But God's given us the means to defend ourselves. God's given us the manual for everything we need to work and continue working and change and continue changing. And that's the Bible. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable teaching for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness. We only need to work to look to our Bibles to find the work we need to put in. If we're constantly in the Word, that's how God speaks to us. 
for our supplement, our faith, like it says in Second Peter. Where do we find these things? Where do we find how to be, how to grow in goodness? How to gain knowledge, self-control, endurance. How do we find these things? By studying scripture. If you're not filling yourself up with scripture and things of God, something's going to fill that void. There's going to be a vacuum inside of you and something's going to fill that empty space. So if you're not filling it with scripture, it's going to be filled with the things of the world. That's a fact. So you have to make sure. The when the enemy attacks. You're read up. You're trained up. You've been grinding. So you're going to succeed. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you. Thank you for who you are. God, thank you for being a God who's worthy of our hard work. Worthy of long days of just grinding for you. Making ourselves better for you. Making you famous. God, I ask you to be with us this week. God, I ask you to continue being with us, to help us to to grow in your word, to grow in who you are. Maybe you're here today, and maybe you're here and you think, well, I haven't, I got nothing to work towards. I haven't began a relationship with God. If that's you today and you think, I, if I die today, no matter how hard I work, I don't know where I'll spend eternity. And you want to change that. There's cards in front of you. Just fill those out. <clears throat> Say, I began. There's boxes to check. I want to say a prayer with you. Uh, with every eye closed, every head bowed. <clears throat> if that's you today and you want to begin that relationship with God, you start that journey that you can start working for. Just raise your hand. If you're at home watching online, And you're thinking, that's me. I don't have a relationship with God. I'm just working for nothing. You can text the number on the screen right now. Just text saved. It's a, it's a phone number. It's a real phone number. We just want to talk to you. If you need prayer, if you need counseling, if you need anything, there's a number on the screen. Just dial that number. God, we thank you. We love you. God, we thank you for the old rugged cross. God, we thank you for sending your son to die for us. In your holy name I pray. Amen.